Bestbookbits.com brings you the book summary of Metahuman, Unleashing Your Infinite Potential by Deepak Chopra. Is it possible to venture beyond daily living and experience heightened states of awareness? In his latest book, Deepak Chopra says that higher consciousness is available here and now. New York Times bestselling author Deepak Chopra unlocks the secrets to moving beyond our present limitations to access a field of infinite possibilities. How does one do this? By becoming metahuman. To be metahuman, however, isn't science fiction and is certainly not about being a superhero. To be metahuman means to move past the limitation constructed by the mind and enter a new state of awareness where we have deliberate and concrete access to peak experiences that can transform people's lives from the inside out. Humans do this naturally, to a point. For centuries, the great artists, scientists, writers, and many so-called ordinary people have gone beyond the everyday physical world. But if we could channel these often bewildering experiences, what would happen? Chopra argues we would wake up to the experience that would blow open your body, mind, and soul. MetaHuman invites the reader to walk the path here and now. Waking up, we learn, isn't just about mindfulness or meditation. Waking up to become MetaHuman is to expand our consciousness in all that we think, say, and do. By going beyond, we liberate ourselves from old conditioning and all the mental constructs that underlie anxiety, tension, and ego-driven demands. Waking up allows life to make sense as never before. To make this as practical as possible, Chopra ends the book with a 31-day guide to becoming metahuman. Once you wake up, he writes, life becomes transformed, because pure consciousness, which is the field of all possibilities, dawns in your life. Only then does your infinite potential become your personal reality. Chapter 1, The Reality of Humans is a Simulation Virtual reality is at the advancement of modern technology. Still, there's one stimulated reality that's been in existence for 200,000 years, since the start of human beings. Though you don't require a headset to feel this simulation, you're living in it presently. Our apparent reality is a simulation. It is not a metaphor, but a biological fact. Let's explain more. At a basic level, we apprehend reality through our senses, filtering the world through our capabilities to see, hear, smell, feel, and taste. What we feel through our senses isn't precisely a real reality, however, a sophisticated simulation. Consider sight, for instance. Let's say you glance out your window and see a tree. That tree is a group of particles, the building blocks of matter. These particles release electromagnetic waves called photons. Your retina, which is the layer of tissue behind your eye, records the presence of these photons. Also, it apprehends impressions of them, which it conveys to your visual cortex the aspect of your brain in charge of visual information processes. That is when your visual cortex deciphers the signals noticed by your retina, do you see the tree? How do you understand that the group of electromagnetic waves your retainer sees is a tree? It is because your sensory insight connects with the mental framework you've been accumulating since you were born. This framework makes you categorize your sensory experiences into groups, separating the natural world up into plants trees, and flowers. It's this framework that categorizes billions of shades into groups such as red, blue, and yellow. This relates similarly to our other senses. Everything our senses capture is alchemized by our minds and into information and experiences that we can comprehend. We sense odorous molecules floating in the garden, and the mind reads them as the smell of flowers. In a concert hall, when we sense the vibrations of airwaves, the mind reads them as sounds of an orchestra playing Beethoven's Ninth. In this manner, everything we feel is mind-made, mediated and formed by our mental processes. Maybe you're smelling a newly baked pie or admiring a rainbow. The reality you feel is truly a sophisticated mental simulation. And as the following chapter will clarify, the simulation doesn't stop there. Chapter 2, before we jump into Chapter 2, if you want to download this PDF so you can read on your phone, when in traffic, anywhere you like, click the link below where you can download this for free. Chapter 2, we exist in a matrix of mental models that are produced by humans. What if a person said to you they believe that the world is a flat disk in the ocean, enclosed by a huge sea serpent biting its own tail? You'd most likely have an issue with maintaining a straight face. As far as the belief systems are concerned, this one's not really realistic. Right. Still, medieval Norse people recognized it as fact. 
That doesn't entail that you have a better understanding of reality than a medieval Norseman. It basically shows the fact that no belief system is realistic. Our mind-made reality doesn't only constitute all the data that goes filtered by our senses. Also, it is made from all the thoughts and ideas that we filter through a difficult matrix of beliefs. This matrix assists us to organize and comprehend the world we live in. Also, it shapes our knowledge of the past, our experience of the present, and our outlooks to the future. Various groups of people have different matrices of beliefs and ideas and therefore make totally different realities. The part of the group you might exist in a reality where the earth was made in past billions of years as the outcome of the Big Bang. Whereas your neighbor might exist in a reality where God made the earth during the period of six days. We are rooted in our individual matrices right from birth when we are given certain traits such as a boy or girl, French or Shankin, poor or rich. We hold on to those given traits even vigorously, shaping our identities around them. Also, as we become old, we accumulate even more of them, coming to see ourselves as clever or senseless, extroverted or introverted, Republican or Democrat. These features are lenses that filter the manner we view the world. These features are lenses that filter the manner we see the world. Lenses that concentrate on some things, blur other things, and completely obscure the remaining things. This distinct conditioning overlaps with wider collectively made mental models that are superimposed on reality. Since the time humans evolved storytelling skills sometime in our older days, we have been producing and partaking in these models. These models contain mythology, religion, and more lately science and technology. From these models, societies have formed ideas such as money, nationhood, and units of measurement such as time. These mental frameworks might assist us to comprehend and organize our world. However, the reality is that they're also very limiting. Still, they're intertwined really securely in the fabric of our lives that they feel as it's not possible to avoid. Still, to attain our maximum potential, we have to begin untying the threads of our mind-made reality and uncover the real reality that lies ahead. Chapter 3, Pure Meta Reality, occurs beyond our perceived reality. Check outside the window. Let's say you see a bright yellow car outside. You understand that yellow is an artificial group you use to build and comprehend your reality. Due to that, so are the car and bright. The car is an aspect of your mind-made reality. Also, your mind-made reality is a sophisticated simulacrum. Does this mean that there's nothing like that car? Nothing as fixed reality? No. However, in order to access this reality, you have to move past your mind-made reality to something really deeper. Imagine yourself at the banks of a river, several miles from the spring where it starts. During the course of its journey, this one-time pure water has been stumbled over pebbles and rocks and filled with weeds. It's become obstructed with dirt and silt. Garbage was dumped in it, and it's become polluted. The dirty water at the front of you, polluted with weeds and dirt and rocks and garbage, is your mind-made reality. The pollutants are the wrong ideas and man-made stories that filter your experience of reality. Now think of watching that river back to its origin, the spring where the water flows clean. The water at its spring is pure reality, unpolluted by artificial ideas or limiting mental models. It's meta-reality. Meta is the Greek word for beyond. Meta-reality occurs beyond the mind-made reality that the majority of us live in. It is a reality that doesn't have restrictions or limitations, a source of infinite opportunities. However, how can you access meta-reality? Well, clear your consciousness of whole mind-made models that hinder it. You're left with pure awareness. Awareness creates every reality. And when the reality is released from delusion and deception, just awareness stays. Meta-reality is pure awareness beyond the limits and restrictions of daily perception. Hence, the experience of meta-reality is an experience of infinite opportunities and potential. The mental structures of mind-made reality are restricting. They restrict your consciousness and narrow your existence. Think of what you could do and the manners where you could exist if your reality was totally released from these restrictions, mental ideas, and narratives. You cease to be just human only, but becoming metahuman too. You'd realize infinite potentials, and by doing that, you'd free yourself to each of them, releasing your limitless potential. It seems really good to be real, doesn't it? 
However, there's no cause why you shouldn't become a metahuman. As a matter of fact, metahumans are already in existence, and you were listening to one right now. I have done 500 book summaries on bestbookbits.com, and I have condensed that into one book. My new book, yes, Success in 50 Steps. Grab a copy now. I have spent 13 years researching this book, rewriting it six to seven times, and I bring it to you right now. Click the link if you want to get it. On with the book summary, chapter four. Every one of us possesses the potential to become metahuman. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart produced an amazing 50 masterpieces that transformed the face of music. Richard Feynman transformed physics with the theory of quantum electrodynamics. At the young age of 13, chess grandmaster Bobby Fischer won a match called the Game of the Century. What does each of these unique humans have in common? Mozart intuitively made harmony from infinite variations of musical notes. With physics, Feynman saw the infinite massiveness of the universe and refined it into tangible scientific laws. Fisher produced a winning approach from a nearly infinite number of likely chess moves. All these people, Mozart, Feynman, and Fisher, channeled infinity, meaning all of them access the infinite potentials of meta-reality to be a metahuman. Due to that, they achieved feats outside the boundaries of mind-made reality. Mozart, Fisher, and Feynman might look like outliers. However, they don't have to be. Anybody can tune into the universe's infinite potentials. The Sutton Genius Principle verifies it. First recognized by physician Darold Trifert, unexpected genius can happen when the patterns and complexities of the universe suddenly open to someone. Trifert mentions the example of an Israeli man, K.A., who had simple skill as a pianist. One day when K.A. sat down to play and all of a sudden understood the entire musical theory. From that point onward, he became extremely accomplished musician. K.A.'s example isn't confined. Some of us are born savant with unique mental skills like a photographic memory. Other people obtain savant skills. After events that affect the nervous system such as a head injury or a stroke, a lot of savants discover that they're com- competent of doing unbelievable things such as speaking a new language very well. Still more, such as K.A. acquired these skills unexpectedly and for no obvious reason. K.A had never heard or seen music theory. How did he all of a sudden understand it? Simple, with a touch of meta-reality. Sudden genius principle teaches that the people such as Mozart and Feynman aren't geniuses with skills that go beyond those of normal human. Infinity isn't a thing just a talented few can understand. It's a thing all of us possess the potential to access if we can just discover the skill to tap into it. Fortunately, the way to infinity is within us. Particularly, within our consciousness, since consciousness, just like meta-reality, is infinite. Chapter 5, Consciousness Occurs Outside the Limits of the Physical Body Neuroscientists can say several things about the brain. However, there are some apparently easy questions that even the most respected scientists see themselves unable to answer. Questions such as, for instance, what is a thought? Why are thoughts not predictable? Where exactly are several memories and information such as the memory of our beloved birthday or a spelling of the word cat found within the brain? Neuroscientists are unable to answer these questions since your thoughts are formed by your consciousness and your consciousness is different from your brain. As a matter of fact, your consciousness occurs beyond the limits of your body as specific varieties of human experience display. One of these varieties come with near-death experiences, which has been extensively recorded throughout history and across cultures. Nearly all the people who have experienced these also mention experiencing a specific phenomenon, the out-of-body experience. People that have experienced a near-death incident usually state remaining conscious all through the process of dying and being revived, and it's normal for them to recall allowing their bodies and floating above themselves. In some unusual cases, people who've experienced near death are even able to report back in surprising detail everything that occurred while they were medically speaking dead. Their consciousness is alive even in the instance where their brain has stopped working. However, how can one do this precisely? The following chapters will take you down the route. Before we jump into chapter 6, I have put together my top 150 best book bit summaries where you can download in PDF, read on your phone, watch in your own pleasure, or listen to it as well. 50 hours of video, 50 hours of audio, and and 2,500 pages of PDFs in 5 volumes. Check it out now, 150 of the best book bit summaries in the link below. Chapter 6, The Path to Meta-Reality, 
starts with nurturing the mind-body connection. Meta-reality is everlasting, timeless, and endless. Your access point to this endlessness is the here and now, anywhere and wherever you are. The first phase of your journey is to train your body and mind in the now, allowing ideas of the past and future fade. The best manner to accomplish in this is by exercising mindfulness. Mindfulness is a kind of waking meditation. You convey absolute unmediated awareness to your experience of your body and your feelings when you practice mindfulness. You've most likely come across the idea of mindfulness before, maybe through mindful meditation, a kind of meditation where you register the physical feelings of your body, the tug and pull of your feelings, and the shape of your feelings, instead of attempting to enforce meaning on any of these. You basically register them, allowing them to flow through you. Nowadays, mindfulness meditation is relishing greater fame than ever before, all thanks to apps and online courses that build mindfulness as a tool to cope with stress. However, while it can cope with stress, it can also be used to do a lot of things when practiced correctly. Using this strong tool merely to cope with day-to-day stress is just like a power drill such as a paper hole punch. Therefore, rather than using mindfulness only to get through your morning shuffle, use your mindfulness practice to unravel in your connection to meta-reality. You might likely be stunned at what you can achieve. Here is some training to help you begin. Firstly, tune into your perceived reality at the actual root of the perception, which is your five senses. Relax into the current mode and allow yourself to the flow of things occurring around you by going back to the fundamentals, such as light, warmth, and smell. Notice these experiences and as you relax into them, let your perceptions grow easily deeper and richer. Afterward, begin to enlarge your perceived reality. The perceived reality the majority of us feel is the smallest fraction of the sensory experiences that surround us. Grasp your hands over your ears and switch off the lights in your house when it's night time and attempt to go from one room to another. Note that you're able to feel as soon as you've deepened your engagement with your perceived reality. Afterward, when you raise your hands or switch on your lights, sensory experience overflows back in. Note how your perceived reality enlarges when it does and how much more perception is likely when you take away your self-imposed restrictions. Probabilities are that you'll subconsciously restrict and edit your perception of reality on a regular basis. As soon as you become conscious of this, you'll see yourself determined to remove those arbitrary restrictions and be able to connect to meta-reality. Chapter 7. Learn how to remove mental conditioning and then you will see your real self. Humans continuously convert immaterial notions into material things to provide the abstract with concrete presence. We convert intangible concepts such as money or love into tangible physical things, such as a $50 bill or a wedding ring. The technical word for this process is reification, the inclination to lessen an immaterial notion to its concrete depiction. Also, the human self is an infinitely huge immaterial experience. Physically, we are constantly changing creatures consist of complex kinds of biological processes. Still, our minds reify ourselves into a fixed state, that of the body. At a mental state, we do precisely the same thing. At its origin, the true self is infinite, immaterial, and constantly changing. Still, as we are present in the world, we accumulate fixed features that restrict our potential. Caught in a twisted network of views, social frameworks, mental conditioning, experience, and beliefs, Our sense of self turns reified. Due to that, we turn down our real, infinite potential. To go back to the real self, it's essential to undoing these processes of reification. Loosening the processes that shape your whole idea of yourself is a task that could go on for a lifetime. Definitely. However, that's the reason it's really essential to tackle it step by step. Here's an easy exercise to assist you to begin removing the false descriptions and limiting features that constrict your real, infinite self. Firstly, understand that from the instance you're born, you go into a world that has been translated already for you. You take over the structures and systems produced by thousands of years of meaning making, humans coming up with clarifications and meanings of thinkings that assist them to understand their world. The deeper you become fixed in the structures and systems of perceived reality, the more your journey from your real self, the origin of inspiration, creativity, authenticity, and infinite potential. Endeavor and go back to your real self by providing yourself the task of having one real thought. 
A thought that doesn't imitate a thought from either a book or a movie. A thought that doesn't develop from memory. A thought that emanates from deep inside the real self. It's really not likely that you'll suddenly be able to create original thought. However, this practice will reveal your eyes to the mental conditioning that restricts your consciousness. Chapter 8. Initiate your creative potential with consciousness. During the course of human existence, a lot of people have attempted in vain to determine and define the origin of human creativity. According to the Greeks, it was the nine muses, goddesses, that gave preferred mortals creative talent. For romantic poets such as Wordsworth and Coleridge, creativity was an unpredictable flash of inspiration that just showed for a lucky few. In reality, the origin of creativity lies in meta-reality, which is accessible to everyone of us. Deep creativity happens when a person sees that which lies ahead of the conventions of daily reality. William Shakespeare didn't only hire Elizabethan vocabulary to make his plays. He organized his vocabulary into a new and original manner. Vincent van Gogh didn't only mix various colors in his paintings. He used color, shade, and tone to innovate a unique manner of interpreting the world he lived in. Just like Shakespeare and Van Gogh lived in a mind-made reality, however, the guidelines that shape this reality are self-imposed. We make and support them ourselves. When you get into a state of pure awareness, you will see things through the arbitrary nature of these guidelines and start to see new methods in which reality can be shaped. Creativity happens when an unconventional knowledge of the universe shows in a physical state. It is enticing then to accept as true that creativity occurs in two states, the mental and the physical. As a matter of fact, everything is one. A painting isn't different from a wish to paint or the knowledge of how to paint. These three things are all parts of the exact creative intelligence. By accessing meta-reality, you as well can move past the rules of perceived reality and release your own creative potential. Here's a practice to get you begun on this path. Think of a small object, a button for instance, or your house keys, or a shoelace. Think of the fact that these whole things are concepts that have taken physical form. Now think of bigger objects, such as a Statue of Liberty. It, as well, is a concept that has taken physical form. Think of yourself in the mirror and know that you, as well, are infinite creativity in physical shape. Quickly, you will stop linking creativity with a form and begin tapping into creativity itself at its origin meta reality and that's a wrap on the book summary of metahuman by deepak chopra are you getting in your own way do you need a coach wise counsel a mentor if you want to chat with me for a free zoom chat i'm opening up my coaching program and mentoring program to only a select few but i can jump on a free 30 minute chat if you feel like you want me to be your coach mentor wise counsel and help you overcome your blocks things that are stopping you, which is yourself, to reach your goals and dreams in your life. Click the link below if you want to chat with me in person, one-on-one. -on -one. We can jump on a Zoom call at your convenience. Thanks for watching and listening. Hope you got something from this Metahuman by Deepak Chopra. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye now.